Intimacy choreography grew out of work that fight directors were doing. When we choreograph staged violence, we make sure that's safe. We make sure that they know how to do repeatable choreography that happens the same way every time. Intimacy on stage comes with so many of the same risks, um, but you actually touch the person. So why don't we have a process and tools to communicate and do that work safely? When you do live theater, we call it an intimacy director. And when you're doing a film or television, then we would call that an intimacy coordinator or choreographer. It's becoming increasingly sought after in educational settings. We want to create young actors who learn about where their boundaries are, who know how to ask those questions of themselves and know how to advocate for themselves in the space and communicate well with their partners. They will need that skill as they move out into the world. I love having an intimacy director. Um, it's really changed and shaped how I practice theater. It's extremely important, not just for your own safety, but the safety of your partner as well. Sometimes there's a, a problem in theater where people start to blend how their character feels for somebody with how they feel for them in real life. But when there's consent practices and an intimacy director, you have lots of closure practices and it keeps you safe emotionally and physically. It also feels more private and protected too, because a lot of it involves working with the intimacy director without the audience of all the other castmates right away. So then you're prepared to show that to the world when it's ready. Certainly you need communication skills. You need to be able to read a script with text analysis and have important conversations with the director ahead of time about their vision. And then to be able to communicate with your actors to tell that story within their boundaries. And boundaries can be physical, emotional, cultural, religious. The idea of having someone, an intimacy co coordinator in, who that is their sole focus, and I can focus on what is the acting aspect of that choreography. It's just another collaborator, and I think the more people in the room, the better. It's so important just for everyone to be on the same page and to feel safe, and not just for yourself, but to know that you are safe, and you also know you're not making someone else uncomfortable which I just think is extraordinary and helpful for every aspect of theater and acting. Having an intimacy director provides like an advocate for you. I think there's a lot of pressure in the theater community to just say yes. I mean, the first thing we learn in improv is to say yes and. You can never say no, that's like against the rules. In order for someone to consent, they have to be able to say yes or no. Both of those options have to be equally acceptable answers. So how do we shift our thinking to hear someone's no or someone's hold on, I need to do this differently, to be an opportunity for creativity, an opportunity to find a more interesting and new way to shape this story that we're all going to tell together. An intimacy director should be included at every show that requires intimacy at every university or major production. It's really cool because we can take on those practices to future productions and future directors who may not hire a, an intimacy director and even just to be a better partner to whoever you might be doing intimacy with in the future. Being like, it's okay if this doesn't feel comfortable and making sure you check in before you just jump in. This work is about carving out time in a process that there's never enough time for all of the things that need to happen to put a show up. You're setting up a communication structure for actors if they have a question, there is someone built into the process who they can come to to ask about this kind of work. And that's really important.